حبك يا رسول الله حبا تغلغل في الجوارح والفؤاد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه We praise the Jews Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we ask Him for His forgiveness. We seek from Him His mercy. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless these remaining days of Ramadan for us insha'Allah ta'ala. And to make our fasting a means for us to enter the paradise insha'Allah ta'ala. In one of the hadiths that we mentioned in one of the previous weeks, we mentioned a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was mounting the mimbar, he was climbing onto the mimbar. And we know the mimbar of Rasulullah, the pulpit, had three steps. He steps onto the first step and he pauses and he says, Ameen. Then he mounts onto the second step. He pauses and again he says, Ameen. Then he mounts onto the third, st- the third and final step. Again he pauses and then he says, Ameen. And so afterwards the Sahaba said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, we saw something strange from you today. We saw something you don't normally do. Instead of mounting the mimbar normally, he paused. Then he paused again and paused again and each time saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, why? And so Rasulullah explained to them that when, uh, just before he mounted the first step, Jabir salam came to him and he said, he is, yani, he is a wretched person or he's a, an, an unhappy person. He'll be a, a disgraced and unhappy person who, the one who he receives the month of Ramadan. He witnesses the month of Ramadan, but he's not able to earn the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah save us from such a fate. Then he, mount, he comes to mount the second step. Then again he said, I mean, so he said, at the second step, Jibir came and he said, he is, a, and he, he is a, 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 an unhappy person or a wretched person who he hears your name being mentioned and he doesn't send peace and blessings upon you. <laughs> then he gets on to approaching the third step and before he mounts the third step, he says, he is an unhappy person who will be a wretched person who, the one who receives or he witnesses the, the age, the old age of his parents, one or both of them, or at least one of them, and he is unable to earn Al Jannah, to earn paradise through one or both of them. He's unable to earn paradise. He's unable to enter Jannah through one or both of his parents. And this is the part of the hadith that we'll focus on today, inshallah ta'ala. What does it mean that, that Rasulullah is saying that this person, he's khalas, he's ridden off? This person, he's a wretched person, he's an unhappy person, he's an unsuccessful person, the one who witnesses his parents in old age, he witnesses his parents getting older in age, yet despite that, even though he's given that, he, even then he's not able to enter a Jannah. What that means is, a person who receives his parents in old age, or a parents as they're getting older in age, this person has no excuse. This person has been given the keys to Jannah has been given yani, an express ticket to enter Jannah. Meaning here, this person's entrance into Jannah has become immensely easier than a person who doesn't have his, his parents by his side. Look how easy he's been, he's been given entrance into Jannah. So much so that Rasulullah is saying that yani, it's, it's, in, it's, it's not conceivable that this person wouldn't enter Jannah. This person has to. How can he not? His parents are there, meaning it, it's easy. He's, he's, his ticket to Jannah is almost written for him. All he has to do is be dutiful to his parents. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the great Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, and this again shows us the importance of parents. He says, there were three things that they always mentioned together in the Quran. They always coupled together in the Quran. Three things. Whenever they mention in the Quran, they mention together. The first he says, Iqam al salat wa ita al zakat. That pay, uh, establishing the prayer and paying charity. Whenever there's a verse saying, establish prayer, immediately after it is, wait as the cat, and establish the charity. Whenever they mentioned, whenever prayer is mentioned, it mentions straight after it, to give charity. That's the first. The second, an iman, wal amal salih. To have belief, to have iman, and then to follow through with good deeds. Illa ladin amanu, wa amal salihat. That's the second. And the third, to be dutiful to, your, to, to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be obedient towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be dutiful to your parents. They're always mentioned together. The fact that they're mentioned together, obey or worship your Lord, be dutiful to your Lord, as well as being dutiful to your parents. 
The fact that it's mentioned side by side, this shows us the importance of a person being dutiful to one's parents. And in fact, one of the Salaf, one of the great Salaf of Salih, he, and I think believe he was one of the Tabi'een, that he was seen when, he's, when his father passed away. He was at the grave, and he was crying, 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 crying. He was, and he cried profusely. So his, his, his students and his companions and so forth were amazed. You have to have patience. If someone dies, you have to be patient and so on. So they were a bit concerned. Why is, he, why is he taking it so hard? Why is he taking it so hard? So when they asked him about it, he says, and why shouldn't I take it so hard? Why shouldn't I cry? Where previously I had two doors that lead me to Jannah. Now one of those doors has been shut. I had two doors through which I could have entered Jannah. Now one of those doors has been shut. This is how he viewed his parents. His parents were his ticket to Jannah. Now his job's gotten that little bit harder. Why? Because one of his parents has passed away. So now it's that little bit harder for him to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now he only has one, one parent to reach to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's unfair, it's very unfortunate that there are many people who subhanAllah days, week, uh, day, days, weeks, even months, sometimes, wallahi, sometimes years go by and people don't even speak to their parents. They don't see their parents or they cut their ties with their parents or they show a lack of respect to their parents. Wallahi, there are many who show a lack of respect to their parents. Often we do it without even realizing. That's, what, that's what's even more scary. That often you and I, you, me and you, we do it without even realizing we're doing it. Wallahi, this is a, yani, an issue which you can't underestimate it. It can't be underestimated. When we think about yani, how, how important, it is, important it is for us to be dutiful to our parents, why, why is it sometimes we get annoyed with our parents? We get upset, we get annoyed, we get frustrated, we, we show our displeasure to our parents, we show a lack of respect to our parents. Why? Why? Sometimes we think we're doing it out of a just reason. Well, sometimes we, th we think we're doing it because of a valid reason. Well, my parents are telling me to shave my beard. So, that, that, so that, for that reason, I don't talk to them anymore. I don't talk to them anymore. I, have any, I, I know a person, I, know, and I actually know an individual who for a long period of time would not talk to his parents. He would enter the house, go straight to his room, walk in and out of his room, and that was it, and not talk to his parents. Because his parents weren't, weren't particularly keen on him being practicing. So he wouldn't talk to his parents. He thought he was doing something good. Often you and I think we're doing it for a just reason as well. SubhanAllah. Do you think it's a valid reason just because your parents are telling you or warning you against something which is good for you? They're warning you against it, or they're trying to lead you towards haram? Even that isn't a reason for you to sever ties with your parents. Even that is not a reason. Because Allah, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِنْ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا And if your parents, they strive and struggle and they exert their effort and they try to cause you, to force you to leave your religion, to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if this is your parents, and Wallahu alam, I don't think any of us have these, these parents in this room, inshallah we don't. But even if that's the case, that your parents strive and struggle, try to turn you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get, cause you to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if that's your case, the answer is in this verse. Don't, don't obey them. Don't follow that command. Don't give in. However, however, وَصَاحِبْهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ وَصَاحِبْهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ but be to them the best companions in dunya. Be to them the best of companions. Be the best of companions to them. So even though you don't obey them, it doesn't mean that you sever ties. And this is parents who are calling you to do the worst sin you could ever imagine. Shirk. They're causing you to commit a sin or trying to cause you to commit a sin that would, that would uh, it's the only sin which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive. And even then, uh, we're told to, to be dutiful to our parents and to be, to be the best the best companions to them in this dunya. Before we, and before we finish, a couple of quick points. One of the, the scholars say that one of the reasons that cause a person to have Surah Khatima, a bad ending, is being undutiful to one's parents. So if you want to die in a good ending, you want to die with your, your final words being La ilaha illallah, may Allah cause us all to die in La ilaha illallah. A person who dies on Kalimah La ilaha illallah, that's all I mentioned. Dakhala Jannah. He enters paradise. What that means is he enters paradise without any, any reckoning, without judgment, without being questioned. He gets a direct ticket to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah allow us all such an entrance, inshallah ta'ala. A person whose final words are la ilaha illallah, this person enters paradise. 
a person who, who is undutiful towards parents, one of the main reasons that this person can't die La ilaha illallah is because of how he was towards his parents. And the proof for it is a hadith of a companion himself, one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, this, this, and there's a young man who's dying, he's dying, and he's not saying the shahada. He's not saying the shahada. So Rasulullah said, didn't he used to say it during his life? Meaning, was he a Muslim? Is he a Muslim or is he a non-Muslim? He said, no, Ya Rasulullah, he's a Muslim. He used to say, La ilaha illallah. But on his deathbed, we're, try, we're telling him, say, La ilaha illallah, and the words will not come out of his mouth. So Rasulullah went rushing towards him. And after inquiring about his situation, he said, and he asked my mother, it's perhaps, perhaps it's because of how I was towards my mother. So Rasulullah asked the Sahaba, is his mother alive? They said, yes. He said, call her to me. So they called his mother. And Rasulullah inquired with her, how was he towards you? How was he with your rights? She said, he used to favor his wife over me. He wouldn't give me my due right. He used to favor his wife over me and would not give me my right. And so Rasulullah he says, in that case, gather some wood, light a fire, and we're going to either, either you forgive, him, forgive your son, pardon your son and forgive him, or we're going to burn him in his fire. He said, yeah, Rasulullah, he's my son. Rasulullah said, it's better for him in, dunya, in this life to be burnt in this life, rather than to face the hellfire in the hereafter. <coughs> so at that, the, the mother said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, witness that I've forgiven him. I have forgiven him. And so Rasulullah said, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, who, saved, who through me saved this man from the hellfire. Why? Because, he was, because of how he was towards his mother, he wasn't able to say, La ilaha illallah. As soon as his mother forgave him, he says, La ilaha illallah, and he died on that word, inshallah. A few final words. What can we do about it, inshallah? This is, yani, this is meant to be just a, 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 talk, a talk to scare you into, into, yani, into saying, oh, I've got to get better. What can we do, inshallah, about it? A few things. First of all, our parents should always be on our tongues. Especially in our prayers, we should be making dua for our parents all the time. As much as possible, make dua for our parents. Make dua for our parents day and night, especially in our prayers. In the, in the, in the Quran, one of the du'as mentioned, "Rabbi khfili wali wali day, Rabbi rhamhuma kama Rabbi yani sagira." Oh Allah, forgive me and forgive my parents, and have mercy upon them for very they raised me from when I was a young boy, or they, how they have mercy and raised me when I was a child. We should make dua for our parents all the time, even if we're displeased with our parents because of something they do for it, they do towards us, or an issue that they've done. We we should be generous to our parents forgiving and kind to our parents, and make dua for our parents as much as possible. Second, we should visit our parents. <laughs> visit our parents. There shouldn't be a single day that we don't, either we don't speak to our parents, or see our parents, or our parents hear from us. Our parents should hear from us as much as possible, if not on a daily basis, then as much as, as, as you are able to commit to, inshallah ta'ala. Let your parents hear from you, even if it's only for a few minutes. Call to inquire, Allah, mom, mom, dad, I'll call just to see how you're doing, to see if, you're, if there's anything that you need. Do you, do you need me to do some shopping for you? How, how are you feeling? How is it? How, whatever they need, find out how they're doing. Inquire about them. If you find that your parents are going through a tough time financially, help them out. If you find that you're, you're going shopping, call your parents and say, look, I'm going shopping. I thought I thought I might give you a call to see if you need anything. Well, like the small actions, but because of those small actions, your parents might say those a few words which we might even, not even consider to be serious, like, Allah may Allah, may Allah be pleased with you. Because of that word, that may be the word that causes your entrance into Jannah, inshallah. So don't underestimate these words. Don't underestimate the value of being dutiful to our parents as much as possible. Improve our relationships with our parents, even if they're non-Muslims, or even if they're, if, if they're perhaps they're not, not uh, what you consider to be guided or not what you consider to be practicing Muslims. Inshallah ta'ala, you're their means of, 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 uh, of guidance, inshallah ta'ala. And by doing it, you're fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're not doing them a favor by being kind to them, you're fulfilling the duty that's upon you, as ordered, uh, ordered upon you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to, us to, to practice these words and make us among the righteous, pious children. And like we are pious to, uh, righteous towards our parents and dutiful towards them, may Allah give us children who are dutiful towards us, inshallah ta'ala. Wa jazakal khair wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Oh,